Is this some new camera angle at Boca Chica? Well, no. This is the static fire of RFA-1 in the Shetland Islands. Couldn't be further away from Boca Chica, really. And yet, something that, in my opinion, is equally as exciting, because we're talking about the first vertical launch from the British Isles, and possibly the first successful orbital test from Western Europe. Very exciting indeed. Since the beginning of the year, there has been a massive flurry of activity at the Saxavord spaceport, especially since the spaceport has received full licensing from the CAA, including their range license a few weeks ago. Now, to be clear, Rocket Factory Augsburg does not yet have their launch license from the CAA, but given how quickly they are pushing forward, I think it's safe to say that a launch is imminent sometime later this this summer. I'm going to keep you up to date and I'll be receiving some better quality and very spectacular, at least that's what I've heard, footage of this recent static fire from RFA directly, so please stay tuned. In the meantime, let's go ahead and talk about Starship. Yesterday on May 17th, 2024, SpaceX requested that the FAA make a public safety determination as part of the ongoing investigation into the Starship OFT-3 mishap event. This is according to an email that I received from FAA Public Relations yesterday. So, what does this mean? What is SpaceX actually trying to accomplish? Well, first of all, the mishap investigation is still ongoing. As a matter of fact, as far as I know, SpaceX still has not submitted their completed mishap report to the FAA. FAA, and that needs to be done before the FAA can submit a list of corrective actions and then finally give the go-ahead for Starship to fly for a fourth time. That could push the launch date for Starship out significantly, which is why SpaceX is trying to get the FAA to bend the rules, so to speak. Let's go ahead and review what constitutes a mishap. A mishap as far as space launches are concerned, is any flight that involves serious injury or fatality. Obviously, that didn't happen. Malfunction of a safety critical system. As far as we know, that didn't happen. Failure of a safety organization, safety operations, or safety procedures. That didn't happen either, as far as we know. High risk of causing a serious or fatal injury to any spaceflight participant, crew, government, astronaut, or member of the public. SpaceX is arguing that that didn't happen, and I agree, there certainly wasn't high risk. Also, substantial damage to property not associated with the activity. No, that didn't happen either. Also, unplanned permanent loss of the vehicle. Well, actually, SpaceX did plan to lose both the booster and the orbiter, so it can be argued that that was what they had in mind. Also, impact of hazardous debris outside of defined areas. As far as we know, that didn't happen. However, we can't say for certain where all the debris landed in the Indian Ocean. Maybe SpaceX knows all of that already, kind of hard to say, and failure to complete a launch or re-entry as planned. Now that definitely did happen. The SpaceX re-entry, regardless of how you look at this, did not go as the flight plan stated. The orbiter was supposed to make a splashdown in the Indian Ocean more or less intact after the re-entry, and that definitely did not happen. So if there there's a mishap, which there was, then there needs to be a mishap investigation. The investigation determines the root cause of the event and identifies corrective actions the operator must implement to avoid a recurrence of the event. Based on the nature and consequences of the mishap, the FAA may elect to conduct an investigation into the event or authorize the operator to perform the investigation in accordance with its approved mishap plan. And the latter is what the FAA has always done with SpaceX, at least for quite some time. They trust 
SpaceX to conduct these investigations and to submit them to the FAA for review and approval. During an investigation conducted by the operator, the FAA will provide oversight to ensure the operator complies with its mishap investigation plan and other regulatory requirements. In addition, the FAA will coordinate response planning with the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, the National Transportation Safety Board, and with the federal launch ranges operated by the U.S. Space Force as needed. Depending on circumstances, some mishap investigations might conclude in a matter of weeks. Other, more complex investigations might take several months. So when officially is Starship supposed to return to flight? Well, first of all, you need to have the FAA acceptance of the final mishap investigation report. And that hasn't happened yet. The report hasn't even been submitted to the FAA yet. The operator-led mishap investigation final report must be completed, including the identification of any corrective actions. The FAA will review the report, and if accepted, the mishap investigation is closed. The corrective actions then must be implemented and all relevant licensing requirements met before a return to flight operations. But the FAA has an escape clause here. The operator may request the FAA make a public safety determination based on information that the mishap did not involve safety critical systems or otherwise jeopardize public safety. This is the important part. The FAA will review the request and if in agreement, authorize a return to flight operations while the mishap investigation remains open and provided the operator operator meets all relevant licensing requirements. So obviously, that's what SpaceX is trying to accomplish here. This, by the way, is the first time that SpaceX has attempted to do this, indicating that the previous couple of flights that happened before OFT3 actually did potentially involve dangers to public safety. The first flight definitely involved potential dangers to public safety. The failure of the flight termination charges to go off when they were supposed to, if the rocket had been flying in a different direction than it actually was, if they had lost control a little bit earlier, that definitely could have presented a serious risk to people in South Padre Island. I'm not sure what sort of danger the second launch presented to the public, but there had to have been something, otherwise SpaceX would have attempted this with OFT2. But OFT3, yes, I think a very strong argument can be made for this. The booster didn't come anywhere near the public and seemed to be completely under control until the final end of the process, until it was a few hundred meters over the ocean. Now, as far as the orbiter is concerned, there may be a question as to when it went out of control. How thoroughly did SpaceX have control of the orbiter while it was on its orbital trajectory. If there was a problem, if the orbiter might have re-entered early, if the boosters might have been malfunctioning, something along those lines that theoretically could have brought Starship down into the atmosphere, perhaps over South Africa, then yeah, there theoretically could have been some sort of danger to the public. However, if that is not the case, I don't see where the FAA can be concerned about public safety here. I think that this is a perfect time for SpaceX to be submitting this request and really it's kind of necessary. Over two months have elapsed since OFT3 and if SpaceX wants to get orbital refueling testing going by 2025, they really need to get these basic flight tests down pat without any mishaps whatsoever. They need to get OFT4 off the ground as soon as possible, and it's very likely that there's going to be a mishap with that one as well, at least with the re-entry process. So it's probably going to take at least another couple of flights before SpaceX has this process mastered, and then SpaceX can proceed with an orbital test of their refueling process. And that's going to take quite some time to master as well, because they need to do it 
it a lot more than one time. They need to do it 10 consecutive times before Lunar Starship can make it to the moon on its first unmanned test to the Lunar South Pole. Then, and only then, once the refueling process is mastered, once a fully successful flight to the moon has been carried out, only then will Starship be ready to put human beings on the surface of the moon for the first time in over half a century. So let's hope that the FAA approves this request and we get OFT4 going as rapidly as possible. I'd like to once again announce that my first Patreon exclusive video on Martian farming and how we can convert the red planet into a green planet or a second Earth, that video is now posted and I'm going to have a second video coming out on my Patreon channel next week. But in order for this to become a proper second channel with weekly content on a regular basis, we need to get 1% of the subscribers supporting us on Patreon, and we are getting closer all the time. We're about 60% of the way there right now. So please check the description if you're interested. Please like, please subscribe, and as always, stay angry about space. <laughs>